In this lesson, we are going to discuss sum and difference identities. Here are the sum and difference formula for cosine. This is saying that the cosine of the sum of two angles is equal to cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle and then minus the sine of the first angle and then the sine of the second angle. Take note that the only difference between this and this is that if this is plus, this is minus, and if this is minus, this is plus. They are always in reverse. You always have the opposite operations. So for example, we want to find the exact value of cosine of 75 degrees. What we want to do is to express this as a sum of two special angles. Take note that we can write 75 degrees as 45 plus 30 degrees. So therefore, using our formula, this is equal to cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. This is plus, so we should have a minus sign here. Sine 45 and then sine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 minus sine 45 is again square root of 2 over 2 times sine of 30 is 1 half. So therefore, this is square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. Or we can just express it as square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. Next, we want to find the exact value of cosine pi over 12. Just like what we did in example 1, we want to express pi over 12 as a sum or difference of special angles. Take note that pi over 12 can be viewed as 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. So therefore, this is cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Using our formula, we get cosine, cosine, and then here, pi over 3, pi over 4. This is minus, so we have plus, and then sine. Pi over 3 and pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. And sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So therefore, this is square root of 2 plus square root of 6 over 4. Next, let us prove this. Cosine pi over 2 minus theta is equal to sine theta. Take note that this is our complementary angle theorem. So let us start with the left-hand side. Using our identity, this is cosine, cosine, pi over 2, theta. This is minus, so this is plus, and then sine, sine, pi over 2, and then theta. Cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0 and sine pi over 2 is equal to 1. Therefore, we get 1 times sine theta and you have your sine theta. Here is the sum and difference formula for sine. Take note that for the sine of the sum of two angles, you have sine cosine and then cosine sine. What's happening here is that you're getting the sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, but then for the second term here, you get the cosine of the first angle and then sine of the second angle. So notice also the difference between cosine of alpha plus beta. For cosine, for the first term, you have both cosines there. All right, that's the difference. And then for the second term, you have sine. And another difference is that for sine, if this is plus, this is also plus. It follows the sign. If this is minus, this is also minus. So for example, let us find the exact value of sine 7 pi over 
12. So just like what we did earlier, we want to write 7 pi over 12 as sum or difference of special angles. In this case, we can write it as 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. So this is sine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Using our formula, we have sine cosine pi over 3 here and pi over 4 here. This is plus, so we have plus as well. And then cosine sine. And we will just plug in the value. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So therefore, we get square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4. Next, let us find the exact value of this one. Take note that you don't really have to know the value of sine 80, cosine 20, cosine 80, and sine 20 over here. This is actually an identity. Look at this. You have sine, cosine, and then cosine, sine. And you have two angles that appear, 80 and 20. So this is just the formula for sine. Why is that? Because you have sine and cosine. So this is sine of this is minus so therefore this is also minus you have 80 minus 20 degrees so you get sine of 60 degrees which is equal to square root of 3 over 2 next given that sine alpha is 4 fifths alpha is between pi over 2 and pi sine beta is negative 2 over square root of 5 and beta is between pi and 3 pi over 2 find the exact value of cosine of alpha plus beta and sine of alpha plus beta this example here already gives us the quadrant of alpha so we have that alpha is in quadrant 2 because it's from pi over 2 to pi and beta is in quadrant 3. Let us see what we need in order to get the value of cosine of alpha plus beta. Using our formula, cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta. This is plus, so we should have minus sine alpha sine beta. From our given, we already have the value of sine alpha and we have the value of sine beta. That's negative 2 over square root of 5, which means that we have to look for cosine alpha and cosine of beta. How do we do that? We get our x, y, and r. This is for alpha and this one here is for beta. Since alpha is in quadrant 2, your x is negative and y is positive. And what do we know about alpha? Sine alpha is 4 fifths. And sine is y over r. So therefore, y is 4 and r is 5. Using our Pythagorean tuples, x should be negative 3. For beta, Sine beta is negative 2 over square root of 5, which is again y over r. Since beta is in quadrant 3, x and y are both negative. So y is negative 2, your r is square root of 5. What is x? We use x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we get x squared plus 4 is equal to 5. And therefore, we get that x squared is 1, but we need the negative square root of 1. So we have negative 1. And therefore, plugging this into our cosine alpha plus beta, cosine alpha, so we look at our angle alpha, Cosine alpha is 
x over r. So that's negative 3 fifths times cosine of beta. We have x over r, negative 1 over square root of 5. Minus sine alpha is 4 fifths from here. And sine beta is negative 2 over square root of 5. So therefore, this is 3 plus 8 over 5 square root of 5 or 11 over 5 square root of 5. Next, let us evaluate our sine alpha plus beta. From our formula, sine alpha plus beta is sine of alpha cosine beta. This is plus, so this is also plus. We started with sine, so this time you have cosine, cosine alpha sine beta. I have here the values of x, y, and r for alpha and beta. Sine alpha is y over r, so that's 4 fifths. Cosine beta is x over r, so that's negative 1 over square root of 5. Plus cosine alpha, x over r is negative 3 fifths times sine of beta, y over r, negative 2 over square root of 5. So we have negative 4 plus 6 over 5 square root of 5 or 2 over 5 square root of 5. Next, let us prove this identity. Let me start with the left-hand side because it has alpha minus beta. I want to go to the other side which only involves alpha and beta. So in order to do that, we have to write cosine alpha minus beta using our difference identity. I'm starting with the left-hand side from our formula. Cosine of alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus will become plus. And then the denominator, which is sine alpha sine beta. Now take note that you want cotangent alpha cotangent beta plus 1. And it doesn't involve a fraction. However, this one has a fraction. And what we need to do is you just distribute this one, right? We write that as cosine alpha cosine beta over sine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha sine beta over sine alpha sine beta. And look at this one. Cosine alpha over sine alpha is your cotangent alpha. Cosine beta over sine beta is your cotangent beta. And this is just the same, so therefore that's equal to 1. You now have that your left-hand side is the same as your right-hand side. Here is the sum and difference formula for tangent. So for tangent of alpha plus beta, it looks like as if you are distributing tangent alpha plus tangent beta. That's what you have in your numerator. However, for the denominator, you have 1 minus the product of these two. Now, what I want you to remember is that if you already have plus here, this one is minus. Whereas here, you have tangent alpha minus beta. For the numerator, you distribute the tangent. This is minus, so therefore, this one is plus. You always have opposite signs. For example, let us find the exact value of tangent pi over 6 plus pi over 4. This is equal to tangent of, you distribute first for the numerator, tangent pi over 6 plus tangent of pi over 4 all over 1 minus the product of these two. Tangent pi over 6 times tangent pi over 4. Tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over square root of 3 or square root of 3 over 3. Plus tangent of pi over 4 is 1. All over 1 minus the product of these two. And all we have to do is to simplify this. You can rationalize your answers if you want, but for me, we can stop here. Next, let us prove tangent of theta plus pi over 2 is negative cotangent of theta. 
I will start with the left hand side and use our formula to get rid of theta plus pi over 2 here. If we use our formula, this will become tangent theta plus tangent pi over 2 over 1 minus the product of this 2. However, tangent of pi over 2 is undefined, so therefore we cannot use this identity. What we will do instead is to write tangent as sine over cosine. So this is sine of theta plus pi over 2 all over cosine of theta plus pi over 2. And we will use our identity. Sine of theta plus pi over 2 is sine theta cosine pi over 2 plus cosine theta sine pi over 2 all over cosine theta plus pi over 2 we have cosine cosine minus this is plus so we should have minus sine sine cosine of pi over 2 is 0 sine pi over 2 is 1 and therefore for the numerator we're left with cosine theta for the denominator we're left with negative sine theta and this is exactly your negative cotangent of theta the left hand side is the same as your right hand side lastly let us prove this again you always start with the side wherein you have sum or difference so for the numerator tangent of x plus y is distribute tangent to x and y, tangent x plus tangent y over 1 minus the product of these two. This is just the numerator, tangent of x plus y, all over the denominator, which is 1 plus tangent x, tangent y. Notice what you already have over here. You already have tangent x plus tangent y. So therefore, this is just a matter of simplifying your complex fraction. So this numerator, we will just copy. And then we multiply it with the reciprocal of this, which is 1 over 1 plus tangent x tangent y. The numerator is just tangent x plus tangent y all over, look at this, this times this. These are just binomials. They are exactly the same except for the middle term. What is this? This is the difference of two squares. Recall that if you have a minus b, a plus b, you have a squared minus b squared, correct? Therefore, the denominator is just 1 squared or 1 minus the square of tangent x tangent y, which is tangent squared x tangent squared y. In our next video lesson, we will talk about double measure identities.